Welcome to Inspiring Business with your host, Mark Bullock. In every episode, Mark interviews others to share stories of thought leaders who inspire others by making a difference. You can find this show on www.videosocials.net and on YouTube, LinkedIn, Apple Podcasts, Spotify, Google Podcasts, Stitcher, and more. Now here's the host of Inspiring Business, Mark Bullock. Welcome, and today I think you guys are in for a treat because my guest is my friend and client, Andrea Vaca. Now, Andrea is the owner of Vaca Family Law Group, and that group is a New York City law firm that works exclusively with divorcing clients who want to find creative solutions for resolving the legal, financial, and emotional issues at the end of their marriage without the need for court. What great to have you. Thank How you. are you today? I'm great, Mark. Thanks. Great to be here. Terrific. So I think, you know, for, for our listeners and, and viewers, um, it would probably be a great place to start with, you know, I know you're an attorney. I know you're a mediator. I know you have your own law firm. I know you specialize in law, but how did all that come about? And how does that fit into why people want to stay out of court? Mm, okay. Well, I guess I should go back to the beginning, I guess, about 30 years ago <laughs> when I went to law school. You know, it was a, you know, L.A. law peer time in, in the world, and I wanted to be a litigator. I, I thought I wanted to go to law school and become a litigator, and I wanted to work with people. I didn't want to do corporate law. I wanted to work with individuals. So family law felt like a good fit. My parents had recently been divorced, um, and, and understanding more about other people getting divorced was really interesting to me. Um, so I, you know, that's what I did. So I became a divorce attorney. I, I did traditional um, divorce law. I tried to settle my cases. Um, oftentimes I couldn't and we had to litigate if needed. And, and I did that, but I really hated it. I hated <sighs> litigating. And I thought I just hated being a lawyer, but I didn't hate being a lawyer. And it, it took hindsight to tell me that. But what I realized is what I hated doing was fighting. I love to advocate. I love to know what's important to my clients and help them find ways to get that in in, a, in, in their legal you know situation that that I'm helping them with. But I didn't like the fight. Right. So my parents had had a very contentious divorce. I mentioned they had recently divorced at, at the end of my college at, when I was just graduating from college, and they made what I learned later. They made very hurtful allegations towards each other. I actually found some legal pad with a lot of the allegations when my father mm. passed away. So I saw the things that they were saying about each other. And um, and they had to back then you had you couldn't get divorced without proving one of the grounds was you had to prove in New York cruel and inhuman treatment. So people had to make terrible allegations going back throughout their whole marriage about things that they did to each other or didn't do. And it was and so it made me they eventually settled their divorce didn't need a judge telling them what to do. And out, on the outside, it looked like a very fair agreement. But the process of getting there destroyed their relationship. The things they had to say about each other, and especially my dad, he wouldn't talk to my mother for 10 years. So it, you know, my, I'm the oldest. I'm at 21, 22. So from then until my early 30s, my parents didn't talk to each other. Wow. They missed. They couldn't be in the same pictures of weddings. They, I had to sit them apart at my graduation dinner. They couldn't be in the same room with their grandchild. Um, and it was terrible. And we were late teen adult children at this point. And um, it, was, it was really hard on the whole family. So, divorce, so I realized that how you divorce matters. And that when couples divorce in an adversarial way, the pain it causes them and their children, no matter how old their children are, Mm -hmm. That's for decades and generations. I, I see that now that if, you know, if a grandparent has a bad divorce and then they raise children and they don't know how to divorce and then their child, it, it's a learned, you know, habit <laughs> almost. So I want to break that cycle. Right. So court, you know, even if you're not in court and having a judge tell you what to do, the process of gearing up for court pits you against each other. It makes you enemies. When you file a divorce action, it's this person versus that person. 
you can't even you can't even get divorced without one person being the plaintiff and the defendant. You have to allege one person did something wrong unless it's an uncontested divorce. So even gearing up for them, preparing for divorce makes it so difficult for couples to eventually talk, learn how to make agreements, learn how to resolve problems that are going to come up later. When I heard about the collaborative divorce process, I'd been litigating, I'd been doing traditional divorce for about 12 years. And I was at a, a meeting at a long conference table when these people came in to talk about the collaborative process. And Mark, I swear, it was like a light was shining down on this table and a path was shown for me. And I've never <laughs> had that happen before. Right. I looked around the room and no one else seemed to be like having this like epiphany like I was. But it moved me and I said, I, I, if I can help couples divorce where the, the attorneys are agreeing not to go to court and the, um, the couple is learning how to talk to each other in a respectful way and is expected to not threaten each other, not to settle under duress, to talk about what's important to them. Well, sign me up. I want that. So I had to get training as a, as a mediator, as a collaborative lawyer. And a couple of years later, I had all the training I needed and I started my collaborative divorce process. And um, a couple of years after that, I stopped litigating altogether because I knew I couldn't wear both hats. I couldn't wear the litigator mm -hmm. hat one day or one hour and then be the collaborative right. hat. Some people can do it. Some attorneys can do it without a problem. I just, I just personally couldn't anymore. Well, and it's not that um, unusual. As you know, we've worked with uh, many mediators, divorce attorneys, other divorce professionals, divorce coaches, et cetera, et cetera, for years. And, and um, <clears throat> I'm often surprised at how many still try to bridge that gap. And that we got one foot in litigation and one foot in, in, in mediation or collaborative. Um, and, and some can do it. Um, and, and, and so, you know, they, they look at it from a standpoint, you know, there is a small percentage of people that just cannot let go of retribution. I cannot let go of, 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 uh, the fight. Um, and, and, you know, for those people, you know, they're, they're, you know, litigation is their, is, is their option, but, um, correct me if I'm wrong. That's really a very small percentage. It is. And I, I say court should be the last resort for your divorce. Do not start there. There's no right. need to start there. You right. Let's see what you can do. Even if there's been betrayal, there's even you know um, depression, um, there's been anger, there's all kinds of, you know, marriages don't end because everything's great. Of course, you're in, that, you're in the worst place you are when you make a decision like this to end your marriage. But right. let's see what we can create where we can get you to. I want, let's, if you're this close and you start going to court, the, the court, the whole process will push you apart. The, the litig, that's what happens when you go to court, you become enemies, right? So if you stay at a court, at least you're trying to bridge the, that gap and come closer together. And that's, and, and then eventually if you can't, if one party just won't settle, you cannot come to a, an agreement. Maybe you bring those limited issues to the court. You know, and and then you use the court. Maybe you've settled your your parenting agreement because you were both focused on what's best for the kids, but you can't settle the financial. And that's what you bring to the court. Maybe it's some really unique situation that you know you need a third party to tell you what to do. I, I, it's not recommended, but it's always there if we need it. Not me because I'm not litigating, but I would refer you to an attorney and hand you off and make sure that you're in good hands. And I'm, I'm sending you to someone who's also going to want to settle if they could but is ready to litigate if needed. Fantastic. So, you know, I think that covers really what was going to be my next question, which is, you know, why you chose to work only with clients who stay out of court. And, but there is one thing that um, you've touched on that, that I've seen throughout the industry. We drank the Kool-Aid a long time ago when it came to dispute resolution. And I'm leaving out the word alternative because I don't think it should be alternative. I think it, I think resolving the dispute should should be at the forefront. And as you said, court is the as the only option later. Because from my perspective, why would you want a judge to tell you how you're going to live your life moving forward after a, a, a divorce? What, I, I can't imagine it for my, for myself. Fortunately, I'm, you know, I, I married my uh, um, uh, 
<laughs> my first real relationship and you know 38 years ago so you know I'm, I'm very very lucky in that respect and it's been a lot of work of course all marriages are um but if you know, trying to imagine myself in a situation where we were looking at a divorce the last thing i want to do is to hand over our power to and and, and how our lives are going to run and how we're going to raise our children you know because we have a life to live after divorce right it's it's not like it's not the end of life it's it's the end of a really it's, it's the end of a type of relationship right it's not even the end of the relationship especially if you have children because like your parents you know if you sever the relationship and you literally put people into that contentious angry frustrated can't stand each other you know vitriol it destroy it, it it not only destroys them a part of them it destroys all their relationships with the rest of their family not the least of which their children so that's right and you know the question why would they people just are um they're not thinking they're not thinking clearly and they're not getting good advice you know people are being encouraged by others who aren't thinking clearly that they should fight, that they should get what they deserve, that a judge will hear their story and side with them. I am telling you, Mark, no matter how much an attorney thinks they did a great job for their their client in a divorce in divorce in the divorce, you know, court situation, no one's ever happy. No one feels they won. They don't really get to have their voice heard. It's it's so painful and drawn out and expensive and no one's happy. And then you're left with something that someone forced on you and you have to live with it. Well, that's why people don't, they, they, they have a lot of um, fights afterwards. They, they are um, violating the agreement. They have to go back to court and enforce it because they didn't make this on their own. See, I want couples to have a durable agreement. Put the time in now and, and invest it now in, in a negotiation, no matter what process you, you choose. And we can talk more about that. But do the work now so that you have an agreement you can put away and move on and have your life and live your life and, and have the future you hoped for yourself that you weren't able to have with this particular person. Right, those are the clients that I work with now. They want creative and private and durable solutions. And, and, and there's plenty of people out there. They just need to know that there are attorneys out there that, that want to work with them in that way. So if, if if we've convinced anybody that you you need to look at an you know an alternative way than what we've seen as traditional you know go to battle you know go to court etc you know down to brass tacks I mean you know what are the different ways that you can help them avoid that morass Yeah well here yeah, there's different ways and so one of the one thing that we do is we help clients who are just thinking about divorce or have kind of talked to their spouse but haven't totally chosen to do it we help them what we call pre-divorce guidance so we help them not make any you know really think about how to divorce what process to use how to talk to their spouse how to put their support team together um, how not to make rash decisions have somebody there to help guide them until they and their spouse are on the path of divorce so we've been finding pre-divorce guidance is really helpful for our clients and then when they decide what process to use we were there to be their attorney and represent them in that process once they make that decision there's usually two choices that our clients make it's either mediation or the collaborative divorce process and mediation is a great process so there's a mediator and this couple is there working with the mediator um, the mediator is neutral and just helping them come to an agreement but it's it's best for couples who they both can advocate for themselves they both have basic understanding of the of the issues maybe not maybe one's more informed on the finances and one's more informed on the what the kids need but they're mm -hmm. willing to work together and talk to each other and work with other professionals that will help them get the education they need and guidance they need to come to an agreement and they they're respectful of each other they're not they're they're both motivated to get you know to go to court to, to go to the mediator and sit down and talk about things um, so that's a great process um, but some people just need an advocate by their side 
they can't really say everything they need to say. They don't know what to do. They want someone, they want an attorney, a collaborative attorney by their side. And in the collaborative process, both attorneys, each client has an attorney, they're agreeing not to litigate. We're agreeing we will never go to court with you. We're also agreeing there'll be a family specialist on the team and there will be a financial specialist on the team. So the emotional, legal, and financial issues are all being discussed as a team approach so none of them hijack the other. Mm. And it's a wonderful approach because it's very holistic and not in a woo-woo way, but truly holistic because if you're not comfortable financially, it's going to cause a lot of emotional and communication issues. And then you can't come to legal agreements. And so we, we work on all these issues at once as a team and we help you come to an agreement. Again, that's really thought out years we think years ahead. How will you handle changes in the kids? How will you handle changes if you move, if you have new relationships? We think help you think through all of these things um, so that when they come up in mediation, we do this as well. This agreement wants to, we want it to be durable. You never have to go back and say, you know, we didn't address this or we don't know what to do. You might, that might happen, but we're going to try to set you up for success and help you live without lawyers in your lives. Now, if somebody, another thing that we do is if, if um, my client wants to, you know, work in the collaborative process, but their spouse doesn't and hires a different type of lawyer, we'll absolutely work with that lawyer. We, we call that a negotiated agreement, but I always make it clear to the other lawyer, I don't litigate. So I'm going to be, I want to focus on what's important to our clients. I want to have four-way meetings. I don't want us to be sending letters back and forth. Like, can we try to make this you know, a, co a collaborative process without, we're never going to call it collaborative because you're not trained in collaborative, but can I bring in some of these benefits of the collaborative process? Can we have a financial professional on the team? Can we suggest they sit down with a parenting specialist instead of having two lawyers talk about the parenting schedule? Let's, let, let's send them to a specialist, right? So that's been really successful too. I think because the other lawyers know I'm, don't, I'm not threatening, I'm not going to court, I really want to come to an agreement. And so we've had a lot of success with that as well. So those are all the different ways um, that we can help clients stay out of court and that we do help clients well, stay out of court. And, and what strikes me is, is that, um, and I know that there's those that just mediate. Right. And there's and obviously we've, we've already talked about those that just litigate or they are just working towards a, a, a settlement. But they're really looking at it from the law. Right. And not necessarily from all of the other components. But mediators, I know, are bringing in and, and, I, and I know you're a mediator as well. So you, you're bringing in the emotional aspects. You're bringing in the, the, the bringing down the temperature and making making sure that the, the playing field's more level. Um, you know, there's, there's usually one spouse that's far more engaged in the finances than the other. And, uh, you know, so there's, there's some education that, that, that goes into it, et cetera. Right. But really the, the word, the operative word that keeps coming up for me is team, yeah. right? You know, you've had a relationship, the relationship has not worked, is, has not worked out. You had a team and that team wasn't able to, to, to work out staying married. Why would you think that only that team <laughs> is going to be able to figure out how to plan for, how to think about, how to resolve the you know the, the emotional concerns, how to how to set yourself up for, and you use the word a couple of times for success moving forward, so that you can have a successful life apart rather rather than a contentious life apart. So. Yeah, the team approach is really, when I first started practicing collaborative divorce, they weren't, it wasn't an inter, um, it wasn't um, an interdisciplinary approach. It is now, now mm -hmm. it is, now it's expected. When I, when I talk to people about collaborative, there will be a team. And because the, co the person you married and the person you don't want to be married to anymore is the same person you're divorcing, right? You're going to have that same dynamic, the same issues, the same communication breakdowns, the same assumptions, the same. So you need people, different people to help break that. And as, as empathetic as I am and as financially savvy as I am, I'm not those, I don't have that training. I'm not a mental health professional. I'm not a financial professional. 
I know to spot the issues. I know what we want this agreement ultimately to be able to do for you, but let's bring in the experts. They're at a lower rate than I am. And they can, they really have the expertise to help you. So I'd rather give the work to other people that are going to give, a, you know, the best outcome. Terrific. Yeah. So I did, I do have one more um, question for you, but if I did want to take just a moment to say, you know, who's the sponsor of this video, which is, I'm the sponsor of the video. <laughs> right? So Practice Marketing Incorporated has been working with um, professionals like yourself, um, whether they be attorneys, financial professionals, um, coaches, consultants, et cetera, but basically professional services, people that want to create content, want to get it out onto social media, wanted to get it out into newsletters, wanted to get it, want to get it on YouTube. And we do that through three services. The first is phone blogger, in which case, instead of you at whatever rate that you're charging, sitting down and spending hours writing out a three to three minute or five minute to read um, a quick article, you know, called a blog post, uh, we have a professional editor call you, uh, interview you, as it were, for a short period of time, you know, 5, 10, 15 minutes at the most. We record that call and then edit that into an article for you and handle all the technology around getting it out onto the social media platforms and out into newsletters and things like that. And that's phoneblogger.net. So if you're wanting to use the written word and you don't want to spend the the, the ridiculous amount of time that you're going to spend trying to do it on your own, um, do check us out at, at, at phoneblogger.net. If you've realized, as we have, that video is where it's at when it comes to communicating with potential clients, with referral sources, et cetera, and you know that video needs to be a part of your marketing, but maybe you're not, you don't know where to start, or maybe you've taken a shot at it, but you're just not comfortable sitting there talking to this inanimate object called a camera, um, and you'd like to have some support around that. Well, we have a very unique uh, process called videosocials.net, and that's the place to go. We'd love to have you as a guest. Just click on the guest tab at the top. There's no cost. There's no obligation, but you'll find yourself in a room full of people just like you that are learning how to be on camera, how to craft and present a message that connects with their audience and helps them to be on YouTube, to have video for their websites, et cetera. And then lastly, if you're looking at longer form content, much as this podcast that you're either watching or listening to now, um, that is another service that there's a whole lot of logistics that come into play to put something like this together. And so our most recent service is called Video interviewpodcast.com. And again, that's the website to go to, uh, to take a look at that. If you have an interest in doing podcasts, we can help with all of the logistical components of putting that together, as well as the best practices, et cetera, to, to make that happen. So all that being said, I mean, Andrea, we've, we've worked together off and on for, for years. And I, I mean, is, is anything that I just said, uh, uh, not make sense or no. does it, it's all I've, I was I was a phone blogger, a phone blog, uh, phone, phone blogger, right? That's what you yeah. Know. I was a phone blogger client for years. Still can repurpose those blogs and still get feedback to them. I continued to blog after that, but then I moved to video socials for a while. Got really comfortable, you know, doing videos and and that was that was a wonderful experience. And now I'm starting a podcast with you. So that's just in, in being formed now. And I'm, it's about how to have a better divorce. And I'm, I'm really excited. So I've grown, I feel like I've grown up with you. <laughs> As your firm has grown, your company has grown, I've been there with you. So I'm a big fan. You, you, you certainly have. And, and, and we're so appreciative of you because we, it's, we develop services for people like you and we get the feedback from you as to what's working, what could be worked better, et cetera, et cetera. We're not really interested in creating products and services just because we want to create something and, and, and then, okay, we, we need to figure out a market to, to, to sell it. Everything that we've created is because we were coaching, consulting, advising professional service providers on how to market themselves via word of mouth marketing using back before the term even became a term, content marketing. 
which is creating information that's put out there in the social media sphere and email, et cetera. So um, I know that you've seen success with it. Um, you, you've, we've learned from you and, 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 and I'm so glad that, uh, um, that you have found it valuable uh, for yourself. Um, Can but, I say one thing, Mark? Yes. Yeah. I wanted to say, you know, your, your podcast, Inspiring Business, on the name of that, I think what you just said, like you, you heard from your clients what they needed. You found services that would help them grow and do be, be the best that they can be based on what you can provide. And that and that's similar to why we started our pre-divorce guidance um, service. That's only pretty recent in the last year or so, because we were seeing this need that mm. people just weren't ready and they needed help. They needed some handholding. So I think, you know, any, to be an inspiring business, you have to be always looking to see what what is what what your clients need, what the market needs, and how can you fill that in a way that, you know, is is true to who you are as a business, and and works with the clients that you want to work with, and that you can best serve. So, fantastic. Which which really leads me around to you know, what would you want anyone considering a divorce to know, um, that would help them to have the best possible outcome. Okay. Well, first, find a lawyer who agrees that court should be your last resort, that will do everything they can to keep you out of court. Even if they don't mediate or don't collaborate, they know that that is the worst place for families, and they're going to try to help you think things through so that you can try to come to an agreement. That would be number one. Second, work with a divorce coach. The divorce coach, if you have a great therapist, that's that's wonderful but therapy is a lot a lot of the time about the past and you do need to heal the past right to create a new future divorce coaching is about helping you manage your emotions in the divorce process and helped you to find your voice so you can advocate for what you need but also not trigger your spouse and not be triggered by your spouse so divorce coaching is invaluable in any divorce before you start the process during the process and then know your finances. Work work with a certified divorce financial analyst. Um, they're special. They're special. They're financial planners that specialize in, in divorce. They know how to look at a division of the assets, deal with the taxes, deal with the, the child and spousal support, and look long term and make sure this is going to work beyond this year or next year. <laughs> like you want to make sure mm -hmm. that the deal again. If you want that durable agreement, work with the CDFA. Um, Another tip, don't settle because you're exhausted or frustrated. You will be exhausted and frustrated in your divorce, just the way it is. It's a, hard, it's a very hard process. That's why you need the coaching. That's why you need the lawyer. And you, you need to take some breaths. This is not going to go like that. It's not going to go fast. But if you put the time and energy and, unfortunately, money that you need up front, you will come to an agreement. And it, again, it will last and be, you know, put that, put that team together and be prepared for a lot of what if questions, you know, be prepared that your attorney is going to ask you, what if this happens? What if that happens? Things you've never thought about, or maybe don't want to think about, but it's important to think these things through because we know what will happen. <laughs> we know what life is going to look like. We don't want you realizing later that it, you never talked about this or that you didn't sufficiently consider certain um, things. Um, and one more thing, if I can add one more thing, Mark. Of course. Don't choose mediation only because you think it's going to save you money. It will be the least expensive process if it's the right process for you. If it's not the right process and there's too much ad, um, anger, you don't want, you don't, you cannot get to a place of trust. Um, there is one person is delaying. You're just going to build. You're going to waste money and create bad bad faith between the two of you. That could really um, poison your ability to negotiate later in another process. So mediate if it's the right process for you. Get some advice from an attorney. When people come to me, I will give them honest advice. I think mediation is a good process or collaborative. I you know I rarely will I say. You could do either. I would. I will always have an opinion, and then you can choose and do what you want. But um, we know what makes it for a good mediation, or what the good signs are. And just don't make it all about money, because you'll just waste money. And, well, uh, if I if I may, because it's it's 
it's tiered, but it's not. I mean, you know, mediation tends to be on the less, uh, a little less of, a, of an investment. Collaborative is because you have other professionals that you're bringing in, but many mediation uh, mediations also bring in also bring in professionals. As a matter of fact, I think that's far more common now than than just be and and so be wary of a mediator or an or an attorney that says, oh, you don't need any other professionals. I can I can I alone can solve your life's issues um, and, and move forward. Right. So, so be wary of that, guys. Um, but really, all of them come pale in comparison to what can happen if you do go to court as far as cost and time. We've all heard the horror stories. We all see the news. We, 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 we watch celebrities go, go through the process. And it is, uh, and I've told my, both my mediation and my, collab, my collaborative professionals that, that, that we've worked with, you really need to context whatever your services are against going to court because court can cost many times what the most expensive version of of uh, of getting a divorce any other way than 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 actually going to court and for me personally i can only suggest that look you're going to make an investment it's going to take it's going to cost money to do this why not make an investment in setting yourselves up for a successful future as successful co-parents as 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 successful individuals that can move forward in life rather than make a much larger investment in fighting and being at war for potentially the rest of your life. Right. It's really, it's really for me, you know, from the financial side, it just doesn't make any sense to go to court. No. And you see it and you're not, you know, you see it from working with all of your clients and you don't even have to be in it to see that. But some people, right. <laughs> you know, if, you, if they get bad advice, it could be from well-meaning friends or family or and then they end up with an attorney that's very lit, you know litigated litigation focused and that they're just on this train now they just like they've gotten on the train and they're heading in that direction and it's really hard to get off once you get on it so absolutely yeah so you have a free ebook that you've made available what yeah. can you tell us about that it's called divorce without court a more peaceful solution and I go more in depth um, about mediation um, as a way to keep you out of court and, and the collaborative process. And so if you want more information, um, if you want to see that ebook, you can just go to my website, vacalaw.com, and you can um, get it there. That you can just click there. And there's a lot of information on the website about all the different services that we offer. Um, there's videos, there's lots of blogs <laughs> going back to my phone blogger days um, and, and recently. And, and so a lot, lots of uh, resources there for anyone contemplating or thinking about divorce. And, and, and for those that are looking at a, a kinder, gentler form of divorce, I just wanna, I, I just wanna reinforce Andrea's website is fantastic because it has years of her experience in speaking about, writing about, recording on video, et cetera, things to think about and, and ways that you can, if, if you're looking at, at trying to do this peacefully and maybe your spouse isn't yet, being able to pass along an article or pass along a, a video to them that, that, you know, that, that might help them is just another means. Um, so it's a it's a wonderful resource. It is vacalaw.com. The ebook is vacalaw.com forward slash ebook. And and folks, we're going to have any links like this are going to be tied in with either description on YouTube or uh, as as a component of or tied in with the the audio podcast as an example. So um, not to worry about that. Do look for Andrea's upcoming. Um, podcast we're very excited very excited to, to to see you do that and i know that you're going to be working with you're going to be having conversations with many of these types of professionals that you that you've that you've already just dis discussed and something a little deeper a little deeper than you know a quick social media two or three minute video this this is an opportunity to have a conversation around that so really really glad to have that um also, you did have uh, somebody that you thought might also be a great guest for Inspiring Business. I, I yeah. think it's Karen. 
one of the um, co divorce coaches I um, I um, work, have worked with for years and, and working with now on with clients and referred to regularly is Karen McMahon, Journey Beyond Divorce. She has her own podcast and she seems she's I know she does a lot of podcasts for other people too, but I think for inspiring for your podcast, Mark, I think she'd be a great guest. So if you want me to make an introduction, I'd be happy to do that. Karen. Certainly will, and, and we'll uh, again we'll put her information as well. We'll be we'll be linked uh, with with this. So Andrea, we 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 could go on for hours, um, but we want to make sure that you know this is fairly concise for for our audience. Um, I I thank you. Um, for the work that you do, because what you do makes a difference in the world. And that's who I have on my podcast. And that's why I created Inspiring Business, because it, it really is, it goes beyond just having a career or, you know, I'm going to be a lawyer and I'm going to help, you know, um, create agreements. Well, that's wonderful. But there are those agreements and are the conversations that are necessary to put those agreements together moving people forward? Is it helping them, you know, get to the next step? And, and, and I, and I hope that our audience can see just how much of a difference that the way that you approach a divorce can make uh, for them, their family members and others that, uh, um, that are in their lives, because a divorce can either devastate or enrich our families and ourselves uh, in, in the process. And, and I know you get that. And, and I thank you for that. I thank you for, for being a client for many years and, 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 and from what we've learned from you in, the, in that process and, 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 and helping us hone the services and how we make a difference uh, for those who make a difference in the world. Thank you, Andrea Vaca. Thank you so much, Mark. You're very it's great talking to you today. I appreciate it. Really. Wonder, wonderful, to, wonderful talking with you. And stay tuned for, we'll have a, a, a bit of a close here. Uh, do subscribe uh, to the Inspiring Business content, podcast on whatever platform that you're using because we've got, a, we've had numerous awesome people on as guests and we've got a whole lineup of a bunch of a bunch more coming. So don't miss it. Thank you for taking a few minutes to listen or watch. And again, I'm Mark Bullock, the co-founder of videosocials.net, phoneblogger.net, and videointerviewpodcast.com. You've been listening to Inspiring Business with your host, Mark Bullock. Thank you for your positive reviews, comments, and sharing this show with others. You can catch prior episodes on www.videosocials.net and on YouTube, LinkedIn, Apple Podcasts, Spotify, Google Podcasts, Stitcher, and more.